Today, we're going to talk about a management of pain in a 50-year-old, otherwise healthy patient with multiple unilateral rib fractures from T1 to T11, and this saturation due to the difficulty in breathing due to the pain. So, Catherine, what is your go-to technique for multiple rib fractures? In general, my preferred technique would be um, thoracic epidural, since you can cover a longer extent of area. Here, we needed to cover fractures from T1 to T11, which is quite extensive, with just one single puncture. It's a quite predictable uh, way to provide um, high-quality analgesia to the patient and extend it for as long as, as needed with the uh, PCAA um, device. There's been a lot of talks and many practitioners today are using the erectoral spinal block. Why not use something like that in this particular case? I think that uh, with ESP, the, uh, the spread that is achieved is less predictable and one might need also multiple punctures. Here, we really wanted to extend the analgesia with a catheter and to cover um, area of T1 to T11 with an ESP, I would not really be sure uh, which levels to target and if one catheter would be enough. Whereas with a thoracic epidural, I have conf I I'm confident that this would uh, provide the quality of analgesia that we were looking for. And what is your favorite position, patient positioning uh, for thoracic epidural? I personally prefer the patient to be sitting up. I think the position of the patient can be very nice um, adjusted. However, in this particular patient, he fell with a bike, broke multiple ribs on one side, and on top of that, he also had a clavicle fracture and a humerus fracture. When we were sitting the patient up, after providing some uh, extra analgesia and sedation, he really was experiencing a lot of pain and he even became vagal without even starting the procedure. So for that reason, when pain or other medical conditions are such that the patients would be more comfortable in a lateral decubitus, we would opt in that uh, scenario for a lateral decubitus position. What are your top tips for thoracic epidural? First of all, I think providing some level of sedation to the patient. I mean, we need to remain in contact with the patient. I don't want to put them to sleep at all, but patients are very anxious. We're working behind their back. Just the idea of them getting a needle in their back, that's how they perceive it, can be very uh, terrifying. And um, just providing some analgesia makes a huge difference. Since we actually started doing that in our practice, we did not see vagal reactions anymore, unless, of course, in this particular case, that was different because of the pain. And do you perform a midline approach or a paramedial approach? I prefer the paramedian approach. Um, and why is that so? Because the, the access through a paramedian approach is just much more logical. It's, a, it's bigger space to enter the epidural space. So Can you show this, that in the model? No problem. We'll show that on a skeleton. For the paramedian approach in a lateral decubitus, we'll palpate the midline. These are the spinous processes we feel. And then we'll go about one centimeter lateral, one centimeter caudal. We'll pass the skin, the subcutaneous tissues, keep advancing the needle, and we'll touch the transverse process. Once we touch the transverse process, we will reposition, pull back the needle, reposition, and advance until we actually enter through this larger space into the epidural space. Once we get into the epidural space, we'll feel a loss of resistance. This is a bigger entry hole than passing through the midline, where oftentimes the distance is much smaller and much more difficult. And what are the most difficult things you find to teach trainees or your colleagues or on how to perform a thoracic epidural? Well, in general, with epidurals, um, after doing a lot of them, by passing the different layers, skin, subcutaneous tissue, ligamentum, flavum, it's a certain feel you need to acquire. The needle passes different structures, different tissues, and you know by passing and the, the, the change in resistance and the little changes in, in feel where you're at. And for somebody who's never done that, this is very difficult to, to imagine. So teaching epidurals, whether they're lumbar or thoracic, to new trainees is always a certain amount of stress 
as a as an educator or as a teacher. I think that is the most difficult. You can you can describe it to them what they need to feel, and therefore actually doing these procedures on uh, simulators first, which I think is what is, we do, is is very very important. Yes. How do you run an infusion for a thoracic epidural? What is the cocktail you use with the local anesthetic? Do you put in any additives? And what is the infusion rate and the patient bolus rate? Um, in our practice for thoracic epidural, the continuous rate is a low, rather lower rate. We run it at two milliliters per hour. The space is more narrow, higher up on, in, in, on the thoracic level than on a lumbar level. And also the boluses, uh, we provide a bolus of two milliliters every 20 minutes. The mixture we use is a low-dose ropivacaine. I think it's a bit less than 0.2%. And in the mixture that we use in our hospital, we add a little bit of sufentum as well. So in the procedure is to bring up and strictly serum. So my thumb is now pushing straight on the midline. I'm going to get, take some lidocaine with a thin needle to numb the skin. Yeah. I'm going to go about a centimeter lateral and caudal. Ik ga een prikje voelen, hè. dat is wel lokale verdoving voor de huid. Hier komt het. Dat gaat een beetje venijnig zijn. We're going to infiltrate the skin. And we're using the loss of resistance. This is a loss. We're at six centimeters. We're going to take the um, epidural catheter. Ik ga het kathetertje opschuiven. Moest het zijn dat je een beetje elektriciteit gewaar wordt, mag je niet verschieten, oké? Okay? So now we're going to advance the catheter slowly. I just warned the patient in case he might feel a little bit of electricity. That is not abnormal. Oké. Okay. I'm going to withdraw the needle. So the epidural space was at, a, at six centimeters. We're going to add an additional three to four, maximum four centimeters. So we'll leave the catheter at 9 or 10 centimeters. We'll leave it at 10 first and then uh, test. So I'm going to take some saline back, yeah. and flush Keep the catheter. Longer. 15, 14, 13, 12. When I aspirate, nothing comes back. We can easily inject. This is just saline. So once that is done, We'll give a test dose. I'll check his heart rate, which is 68. And we'll inject two milliliters of lidocaine, 2% with adrenaline. Of niet echt. Okay. So if there's a 10% increase in heart rate, this could be considered as a positive test dose. We'll wait a little bit. I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm gonna clean the insertion point. That's it. Yep. Okay. Misschien tot hier. Ik zou het skill. Ja, we kunnen het afknippen misschien. Dan moeten we een stukje knippen. Ja. Oké, dat is goed.
to get to the back. And that was the thoracic epidural analgesia in a patient with multiple rib fractures that resulted in immediate substantial pain relief and improvement in O2 saturation. Be sure to visit Nysoras LMS for access to all regional anesthesia techniques and case management. See you in the next video on Nysoras YouTube channel. Greetings. Until next time.